Today on Tocant, I want to talk about the built-up expectations, mostly in our heads, uh, that we sometimes have when we lust after a particular watch versus the harsh reality when we actually see those pieces in the metal or in this case, we're going to see uh, in the ceramic. So I'll take two examples of uh, two watches that I was absolutely sure that I loved and I was, you know, ready to commit until I saw them and within one second, the dream shattered. Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Ben. So researching our next watch or hunting for our next purchase, you know, is a big part of what makes this hobby fun. It's the, you know, the thrill of the chase basically. So, you know, I'm sure like most of you, I would spend countless hours of watching all videos on YouTube that I can find about a particular watch. And, you know, I would watch 143 different videos about this particular watch. Um, I would also, you know, go on forums and read everything, going back years and all the threads about a, a particular watch or, uh, you know, reading all the watch reviews online or sometimes I would even read or watch videos and, and read reviews in a different language and use Google Translate to just make sure that they match what people also say in English. So. Uh, you know, we get very consumed in this, uh, in this pursuit and either, you know, researching one particular watch or maybe comparing, uh, a lot of it is also comparing, you know, this watch versus that watch or, you know, if you're going to uh, spend 10,000 on this watch, then what else can you get for 10K? And then you're going to look at every other possibility under the sun. And so, you know, it's hours and hours and days and months sometimes or even possibly years. Uh, just researching a watch and after all this time we think that we know everything about the watch We've read everything. We've read all the opinions. So uh, we are convinced that uh, you know, we are ready um, And we know everything about it. So, so for example, I don't know the Black Bay uh, 58 it's the perfect watch. Everybody says so, right? So we're convinced that the Black Bay 58 is the right watch for me It's the perfect watch. I know everything about it until you go to the store and then you put it on your wrist and sometimes, you know, you don't even have that possibility uh, because I live in Hong Kong. So, you know, we have every possible brand I can think of uh, available right here in Hong Kong. But if you live in a, I don't know, in a remote area or you don't live near an AD or your AD doesn't have the watch and, and you have to either order it or, or buy it online, e-commerce is, is big now with COVID. Um, so sometimes, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't have a choice. Uh, but when you see the watch either at the store or when you receive it and you finally put it on your wrist, sometimes within that first second, everything collapses. So let's take a first example. The first of these shattered dream stories for me was the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean 600M uh, ceramic, the deep black version. I uh, really wanted a ceramic watch and I had researched this watch to death and I was sure that, you know, I knew everything about it. Sure, I knew it was going to be a big watch. It's 45.5 mil, uh, but, you know, I also wear a Seiko Sumo, which is also 45. So I thought, you know, I'm, I'm used to wear a big watch and I can put it off and it's a dive watch. So a big watch is okay. Uh, and I thought, you know, it's a ceramic watch, so it's going to be light anyway. So it's going to wear well. And, you know, I have read everything about it. I read all the forums and I have seen, you know, Tim Marshall's uh, videos where uh, he mentioned that, uh, you know, if you had a wrist of maybe 15 centimeter or over, you could pull it off. And but you have to remember that even though Tim Marshall is like a walking encyclopedia of watch knowledge, uh, he's also there to sell you a watch. So uh, sometimes you have to take what he says with a grain of salt. But I wanted to believe it because I wanted to love it. Right. So I thought. Um, you know, I'm ready, um, you know, Omega Ceramic is second only to probably uh, AP's uh, Ceramic, the finishing, the brushed versus, uh, you know, polished. So I, I, I knew I was going to love this watch. So eventually I walked in the Omega boutique and uh, I asked to see it and the salesperson, you know, uh, put it on my wrist. And then everything changed within that one second uh, when I put it on my wrist. It's, it, it was just so thick. This watch, I think, is 16.8 mil thick or, or 17, something like that. It looked huge. It looked enormous. And it's not even the lug to lug um, um, measurement that was, uh, you know, too big. Uh, but it's just the thickness. I kept looking at it and I just wanted to cry that it was not what I was expecting. Even though I knew the measurement, I had read them, I had seen the watch, but it did not work on my wrist as I had expected. And even the salesperson who was basically there to sell me a watch and, and, and meet her quota uh, told me, look at me and say, you know, this is, doesn't work for you. It's just way too big. You don't have the wrist for it. Well, thank you very much. 
So that just that that was the my my dream was just shattered. So then I, you know I remembered that um, there is also a 39.5 uh, millimeter version of it. Uh, a smaller version and uh, Tim also again had mentioned that you know uh, it would probably be his favorite uh, Seamaster Planet Ocean so I thought okay maybe I'll try that one and it will wear much better they did not have it so I had to go to a different Omega boutique and in that boutique they also had the big blue version the blue and orange version so um, you know again I thought okay it's the same one it's the same measurement but maybe because you know it's not black it's blue and maybe you know it's not the, so uh, it's not so obvious so uh, I, I, try, I still tried that one and obviously you know it was the same thing it's just huge uh, but then the salesperson over there you know was uh, more salesy and he was telling me well you know it's not a uh, you know everyday kind of watch maybe you just wear it once in a while it's a weekend type of watch so you know you have to basically make an effort and I thought you know why do I have to make an effort trying to force myself to love a watch that is way too thick for me I mean why doesn't Omega make an effort to make a thinner watch uh, so anyway so that one was off the table and they did have the 39.5 so I tried it on but then again it didn't work that one looked first it looked tiny compared to the other one but it's also very thick it's about 15 millimeter thick which for 39.5 made it look still much bigger or like disproportioned on my wrist and that did, that did not work either so i wish you know they would make something in between maybe a 42 or 43 possibly but most of all thinner so uh, i was really really disappointed because that i you know i i, I can go all the way to ap ceramic and i thought omega ceramic was going to do it for me but uh, the dream was off the table at this point so another example, the second one, this one still haunts me. It's the Blancpain 50 Fathom body scarf on a bracelet. Um, I had tried the 50 Fathom and I knew that it's also a big watch and it was too big for me. So, uh, you know, I love that one. I loved it, but I, I knew that it's too big. Uh, but I was considering the body scarf. So this one is uh, only uh, 43, so it wears better. And uh, they had the version on the bracelet that I loved. Uh, again, I had researched it to death, I had seen all the pictures and I knew that Blancpain is the only Swiss brand that uh, uses hex screws. Um, also, they use it on the body scarf for the lugs to, to uh, hold the, the, the strap or the bracelet. And uh, on the body scarf, they actually used hex screws uh, for all the links of the bracelets. And, uh, you know, usually, typically, you will see German brands like Zinn or Damasco using uh, hex screws, but uh, Swiss brands don't. So the bracelet is built like, the, like a tank, and uh, that was actually a big part of why I wanted that watch. I thought the body scarf on a bracelet uh, was the version that I wanted. I was sure of it. It was perfect. It was nice. It was vintage, um, you know, inspired. Uh, it was not too thick. It was not too big. Perfect. Uh, I walk into the Blancpain boutique. And I asked to see it, and the second I held it in my in my hand, it was so heavy. That watch was crazy heavy, and I realized that you know it had all the links, uh, but even uh, without a few links, I think that was well over 200 grams. And when I put it on my wrist, uh, first it looked bigger than I expected because uh, of the you know the way the the end links uh, make the watch look a bit bigger but mostly it was the weight i mean it was so heavy that i knew that within an hour probably i would want to take it off and it would be uncomfortable so heavy that to the point that it would be uncomfortable and i was so disappointed i really wanted to love it but uh, i knew that it would end up being a watch that i would probably only wear once in a while and i mean that, that's an expensive purchase for me and there is no way that i was going to spend that much if i don't wear it every day i thought that was going to be my everyday watch um, luckily, they also had the ceramic version with the blue dial and it's one that I had not really considered because it didn't come on a bracelet. But when I put that one on, so that's the reverse effect, this one actually amazed me. It was much lighter because it's ceramic, but it still has a reassuring weight. It's not super light, it's not so light that it feels like a toy. Uh, it, it still has a good weight. Um, also, the, the, the finishing of the ceramic 
uh, it's extremely good. I mean, they share the technology from Omega, uh, but you know, Blancpain being a higher allergy brand and being you know higher up on the on the food chain than Omega, uh, I suspect that it's even better finished. The brushing uh, on the case, it's very very good. It really looks like metal. If maybe you didn't tell me, uh, the the kind of a shade of of ceramic makes it look like um, titanium grade too, and it's very well done. The blue dial is, is mesmerizing. I was so impressed by that blue dial, even more than the, you know, the ardoise of the, of the um, bracelet version. And uh, I, I loved it. And, you know, we could go and talk about the movement also, the, you know, 13, 15 in, in, in it, very well finished, perfect. Um, but this one obviously doesn't come on a ceramic bracelet. And so, uh, then I would, ha I would have to go back to the drawing plans, you know, and then uh, research that watch and compare it to all the other available options, etc., etc. So uh, what I want to say is that the one that I was lusting after really disappointed me, uh, while another one that I had not considered really, really surprised me. So at the end of the day, you think you know, but until you put the watch on your wrist, let me tell you, you don't know. You have to try the watch on and then sometimes everything changes at the last minute. So I would advise, you know, if you can, if you have access to an AD with the watch, go try it maybe early in the process to save you some time. And if it works on you, then do your research, compare it, you know, watch all the videos and read all the forum threads and everything else. Uh, but you know, if it doesn't work for some, you know, silly reason as the thickness or maybe the color doesn't work for you or the luck to luck or the comfort or the weight or whatever else, then you know, you, you can move on to the next one. Uh, and if you buy it online, then just make sure that you can really return it at no, at no charge to you. Um, sometimes it's really, really painful after we've invested so much of our time and effort and, and to find out that it, it doesn't work and we really, really wanted it to, to, to work. We really wanted to love it. So let me know if you have any uh, of those stories, like if you have any of those watches that you, you, know, you were sure you were ready to buy it uh, and then in the end it just didn't work within one second. So don't forget to ask yourself, you know, what makes you tick? Uh, thank you for watching this video, uh, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.